Good morning, Hope Chapel. It's it's a great privilege to be able to meet at least like this every Sunday. And we hope that soon we'll be able to meet together physically in the Hope Chapel Hall. One of the things I enjoy in Hope Chapel is the worship time, where I can forget about all the people around me join with the choir in singing these songs from my heart, give thanks and praise to God and worship Him, acknowledge Him in my life, in my heart, and rededicate myself to Him. That's one of the times I enjoy most. So we want to, I want to thank you, Ulka and the choir, for doing this every Sunday, week after week. I also want to take this time to thank Don and the rest of the media team I understand in these particular days they have been working almost day and night, uh, recording, editing, uploading, all these things. So my prayer for them is that each one of them will receive a special blessing from God. Shall we pray before we start this message? Father, we pray that you will be with us as, we, as I speak that your anointing will, gi will guide me as I speak every word, that what I say will be according to what you want the people to hear. And I pray that you will anoint the listeners also, that your word can enter their heart, strengthen them, help them, encourage them, guide them. We pray that in your purpose for our church, we pray that you will speak to us, strengthen us, and take care of us, provide for us in every way. Protect us also from all that is going around us. We pray that your will will be done and your name will be glorified. So we commit this time into your hands in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to start by reading one verse from 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 I have fought the good fight I have finished the course I have kept the faith so these are words from the Apostle Paul towards the end of his life you now second Timothy was apparently the last letter he wrote before he was martyred by the Roman Emperor and he was writing to Timothy, the young person whom he had mentored and taught all that, you know, that he himself knew. So this was his message to Timothy, that he is now aware that his life is almost at the end and he is passing on this exhortation or encouragement to Timothy saying, I, by God's grace, I have been able to fight this good fight, I have finished the course, and I have kept the faith. Now look at Paul's uh, heart in saying this. We can see he was happy. He was satisfied with the way his life had turned out. Now, he said he is not perfect. He is not perfect. He, he kept repeating it, it many times. He is not perfect. He has not reached the the perfect level of perfection but he says uh, being aware of his failures and his shortcomings he found satisfaction so there is a balance here recognizing who who he was from where God had taken him what all failures he had made in his life but recognizing also the work God has been able to do in his life he found overall a satisfaction in being able to complete this race. He calls it a good fight. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 says, this is his statement about himself. It is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I am foremost of all. He said he used to be, before he came to know, know the Lord, he used to be a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent aggressor. That's what he used to be. From there, 
God had taken him, transformed him to become one of the chief apostles of the time. But he wasn't saying at this time, look at me, I am the chief apostle, see what all I have accomplished, how many churches I have established, how many people I have led to the Lord. He wasn't saying all that. But he was saying, God had a plan for my life, I was able to complete it. Yeah, with failures and all that, but yes, I am happy that I am able to complete it. Not claiming perfection, but now, at, towards the end of his life, he, he was satisfied and he said, I am now ready to meet my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, when we look at the statement that Paul made, we can see that satisfaction came at three different levels. And we want to look at each one of them separately. He said, the three of them, he said was, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. These are three different things that he has mentioned. Let's look at our own life and examine ourselves to see where we stand with respect to the race, the fight that we are, take, we are in, we are running. In our race, we are all in a race. But in our race, the, the goal is not to be the winner. Our race is, we are winners, all of us are winners if we are able to complete the race without giving up, without getting uh, compromised. That is our vic victory. We are not going to be able to say, I ran faster than all of you, I reached higher goals than all of you. No, we are not in comparison with one another. Each of us has a special calling, each of us starts from different places. Each of us goes through different circumstances, but all of us are expected to complete this race. That is our goal, to complete this go race in these three levels, having fought the good fight, having finished the course, and having kept the faith. Now, when we want to complete this race, we have to realize that we can't run this race any way we like. Second, no, Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Also, if anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. There are certain rules God has laid down for us in running this race. We don't make up the rules. We find out the rules from God, from his word. God says this is the way you have to run and that is the way you have to avoid. We can't say, no, I don't agree with that or I don't like that. I will run this way to the best of my uh, decision or ability. No, we can't say that. We have to run according to the rules God has laid down for us. If we don't agree with that, that's because we have some problem. It's not that God's rules have some problems. We have some problems. We have to better learn to obey the rules of the game according to God's plans, rather than deciding how we are going to run. What is this race about? You know, this is one of the most important things we need to understand. What is this race all about? You know, we have in this world all kinds of races. I'm not talking about athletics, but the life races, people run. We have heard about the rat race. People are into the rat race, trying to compete with other people and rise up to the top of the organization, make a name for ourselves, make a lot of money for ourselves. We compete with other people, we push down people, we climb on top of other people. That is the rat race we are all aware of. But that's not the race that God has in mind for each one of us. When he paid the price for our salvation to take us from the devil's hands pay the price of the blood of his son to purchase us from the devil's hands, he has higher plans for us. Not that we should become the top of the organization or things like that. We have to work in this world. We have to compete with other people as we work in this world. These are things we cannot avoid. No. But beyond that, before that, on both sides, behind that, we are to be covered we are to be overwhelmingly taken up 
by this one race that God has set for us. When we are running that race, it doesn't really matter what people think about us, whether we get promotion, whether we rise to the top, how much money we pay, take. These are not the important things, even though by themselves they are important. But beyond that, above all that is our race that we have to run for Christ. And if we neglect that race and we run all these other races, we make a name for ourselves in this world, and make a lot of money, our house is bigger than everybody else's in the neighborhood. One day when we leave this world, where do all those things go? What is the actual end result of our, our race on this earth? We have nothing which we can carry on to the next world, to, the, to eternity. We have wasted our life running after these things which we, according to Jesus, moth and rust will destroy them. These kind of things that people gather on this earth, moth and rust will destroy them. But there is a, there is a wealth in eternity, that is the race with, for which we have to run. What is, what is that race about? Let me read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. What does that mean for us? As we run this race, there is going to be some brightness coming into us, which becomes brighter and brighter as we move forward. What is that talking about? It is talking about the life of Christ in us. If we forget about this life of Christ coming into our life, but we are after money and fame and honor and, and accomplishments and all these things, and we don't have anything shining within us at the end of the life, what do we have to show to God? He is not going to be impressed with how much money we have made and all those things, but he is going to look at how much we have become like Christ. And what do we have to show? Because we never realized it. We thought coming to Jesus, accepting Jesus as our Savior is enough to take care of eternity. And then like the rest of the world, we run after all these things. Is that the race that God has for us? That's not the race Paul ran. That's not the course which he completed. There are these three things about how Paul completed his race. One is he fought the good fight. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. What does it mean to fight the good fight of faith? Many people think that faith is something we accept in our mind. We believe Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the whole world and we believe Jesus rose on the third day and all those things we believe, we think we have faith. But fight, the good fight of faith means that what we have faith for is how we live. If our life doesn't match with what we consider as having faith in our head, in our mind, we are mistaken. We don't really have faith and we are not fighting this good fight of faith. So to fight the good fight of faith means basically in simple words it means we live according to what we profess we believe. If we say I believe this, show it by our life. That's how we will show that we have faith. If we say we have faith but we live like the rest of the world, what did that faith do to us? Do for us? No. If we live according to the faith that we profess, proclaim with our lips and say that this is what we believe in but our life doesn't match with it, we are not fighting this good fight of faith, we are keeping this so-called faith in a different department in our life, a different compartment in our life and we are living just like the other people in the world, enjoying the things of this world, going after the pleasures of this world but we are thinking that we are Christians, we are children of God, God is going to take us to heaven when we die. Maybe we are deceiving ourselves. 
if our faith does not produce works, it is a dead faith. The Apostle James said. The second part of this verse says, take hold of eternal life. That is why we are fighting for in this race. What is it we are looking for? Eternal life. You know, many people think that eternal life means once we are there in eternity, we will live forever and ever. Did you think that the people who go to hell, how long do they live? They also live forever and ever. So living forever and ever is not the full characteristic of eternal life. There is only one person who is eternal, one who had no beginning and no end. That's God. To have eternal life within us is to have His life in us, His nature in us. If we say we have become Christians, but we have not been bothered at all about participating or partaking of His life, that wasn't our goal at all, then what was our goal? We, don't, we, we didn't want to go to hell, we wanted to go to heaven, that was our goal. But if we live like the rest of the world, and we haven't participated in the life of Christ all, our, all through our life, we are deceiving ourselves. We are deceiving ourselves. So let's understand what this race is all about. If we want to be Christians in a real sense of the word, we have to be in this race. The goal is participating or partaking of God's nature, the eternal life. Taking hold of the eternal life. Now we can very easily say in our own life, we know what is it that we have as a goal. Is it to impress people? Is it to make more money? Is it to enjoy life more and more? Whatever is, is it, is, if it is not eternal life, we are in the wrong race. We think we are going to heaven. We, are, we think this is the race that God has given to us. But we are in the wrong race. The, ra the real race God wants us to run in is to take hold of eternal life. That's one thing we have to examine ourselves. Philippians chapter 3 Verse 12, Paul says about himself, Not that I have already obtained it, or have already become perfect, but I press on, so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. You know what, when Paul saw this, the goal of the real race from God he was able to look at all the other things that people are running for. He himself ran for all those things earlier, before he came to Christ. When he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews and he was a scholar and he was righteous as a Pharisee and all that. Now he looks at all those things and he says, Now, now that I have seen the real goal of my life, I consider all these things as dung or garbage. Or rubbish. He uses you know, different translations, uses use different words. Now, have we seen the goal like that? That this is the pearl of greatest value. I will give up all my other pearls and I will run after this goal. Then we are in the race, in the real race. If we are running after other things, we are fooling ourselves if we think. We are running in the race that God has given for us. So let's not deceive ourselves. Let's look at our life honestly and find out which direction we are headed in. He, he realized, you know, in Romans chapter 7, he has a passage there. He says, I want to do the right thing, but I find myself doing the wrong things. I don't want to do those wrong things, but I end up doing them even though my mind is set on doing the right thing. So he recognized this fight going on within himself. And everyone who has started this race will also recognize the same fight going on in our lives. Even when we set our mind on doing the things of God, we find a pull from our own old sinful nature pulling us in the wrong direction. 
and many times we end up doing the wrong thing even though we didn't want to do that we want to do wanted to do the right thing so he recognized this goal no this, he recognized this war that is taking place within himself but he didn't give up he kept on and that's an example for us even though we find all this opposition within ourselves not just from people outside not just from the world and all that but from within ourselves this fight going on pulling us back from doing the will of god we don't give up we should not give up we because our direction for this race is what god has set before our eyes eternal life taking hold of eternal life and that's how we have to run and that's how paul completed the race he was able to complete that race the second part of his statement is he says i finished my course what was his course in this connection look at what all he accomplished he was an apostle he was an evangelist he wrote a large portion of the new testament scriptures he planted so many churches all over the known world of those day of those days he accomplished all those things because god had given him that kind of a calling or vocation or ministry what is god's vocation for us calling for us what is god's ministry for us if we are born again christians if we are children of god we are a part of the body of christ christ is the head and we are the rest of the body so we are here to do what the head tells us to do so each of us has a small part to play in this body of christ now have we thought about this what should be my part in this body of christ what does god want me to do what ministry does he have for me have we thought about that or we thought if we give, give some money to the church that's my responsibility that's over then i live like the rest of the world do whatever i like but i am giving money to the church and people in the church are doing ministry no what is my ministry in the body of christ so all of us have different roles in the body of christ not all are the same some are very prominent they shine out in front of other people but some are very hidden in their ministry they do things faithfully for god because they love jesus they want to serve him but they do it in their hidden secret way many people don't even know what these people are doing but god has not you know forgotten about them god takes notice of what sacrifices they are making in secret because they are serving the lord jesus christ that is to complete the course now if we have not even understood what god wants us to do it's time for us to see god and find out lord what do you want me to do maybe i am not equipped or talented in that direction or this direction maybe i can't do what those people are doing but what is it you want me to do lord then god usually tells us what he wants us to do by giving us a burden in our heart some need which we see around us which we want to help with we try to help with our human abilities then we find that that's not enough to really help people or in situations then we ask god lord i i am so concerned about this particular need i see but i am not able to do much can you please help me then god may give us some spiritual gifts god may bring us al along with some other people to take care of this particular need that's how ministry develops ministry doesn't come by just going to a bible college getting a degree and saying now i am a minister of god no ministry has to come from god he impresses upon our heart a particular role that he has in mind for us and when we do that that is how we fulfill our course paul fulfilled his course what about us have we started on this course how much have we progressed on this course can we say that towards the end of our life we want to complete this course that god has given to us that is the second part of this race the last thing he says is i have kept 
the faith. Now what is the opposite of keeping the faith? Losing the faith. Doesn't it happen to people? Some people are imagining that once they are saved, they are always safe. Yeah, but suppose they lose their faith, what happens? How do people lose their faith? Just take some common examples. You prayed seriously for something and God didn't answer that prayer. So what happens to your faith? You start thinking God doesn't care about this need. God doesn't answer prayers. God doesn't care for me. God is not even aware of what I am going through. If we start thinking like that, what happens? We lose our faith. Haven't you seen things like that happening around you? People losing their faith. They started well. But along the way somewhere, they lost their faith. Some people are losing their faith because of philosophical problems. How can a loving, almighty God tolerate so much of evil in this world? They can't figure it out. So they say, no, no, I don't believe in God. They started believing in God, believing in God as a child. As they grew up, this kind of problems faced them and they could not find an answer. So they gave up on God, saying, no, I don't believe in this kind of a God. Sometimes people get confused because they see some failure in a, ch in a child of God and say, yo, if he or she could do like that, what's the, prob what's the possibility that I will make it to the end? If he or she could not manage it, maybe I won't, won't be able to manage it. So let me not go on in this game. Let me give it up. So there are many ways in which people can give up their faith. And once they give up their faith, their salvation is by grace through faith. If they give up their faith, grace doesn't reach them because grace has to be received through faith. But Paul made sure that he kept his faith till the end. Whatever disappointments came his way, whatever Attacks came in his way. See, he was persecuted, he was beaten up, he was stoned, and he was shipwrecked. So many problems he went through, but at the end, he did not give up his faith. So if we want to know God and go in this race, we have to be honest about ourselves. We have to be sincere in wanting to run this race, and we must go on to complete it. Like I said earlier, we are not in competition with other people. What they do is between them and, and God. But we have to give an account of our life to God. In the end, we should be able to say, Okay, I failed so many times, but God was forgiving, God was merciful. But I, by God's grace, I am able to complete my course. This was the task God had given to me. This was the ministry God entrusted to me. I was able to do it. Okay, I had many failures and all that, but here is, here is God's work in me. He was able to complete what he started in my life. That is the way we run this race. Many people, sadly, many people are not even running a race in this, in this way. They are like all the other people outside. They are running their own life, rat race and other races and they are joining with them, except that they, they say they believe in Jesus. They say that we are children of God, but they are not actually in the race, running this race. Now, if any of you listening to me at this point has not actually entered into this race, do that now. Don't delay. We don't know how much time is left out for us. The way things are going around us, we have no idea about the availability of time. We are not in a position to make long-term plans. We can't even make immediate plans. But please, get into this race. Take life seriously, sincerely. Don't waste away your opportunities. Don't waste away your time. Get into this race. And those who are already in this race, what is that we can say? Don't give up. Even though there is trouble all around us, there is trouble even for us, don't give up, hold on, because God has called us to eternal life, partake in the nature of God, 
in becoming like Jesus Christ that's our goal so we run towards it counting all other things as dung garbage rubbish and let us not give up let us continue to run this race and even if there are things we cannot understand about why God is doing this why why that person is doing this and all that let us not give up our faith hold on to the faith like Paul we should be able to say I have kept the faith without giving up we need God's grace we cannot do it by ourselves we know all that we are weak people we fail very easily but God is on our side he is running this race with us holding us holding on to us encouraging us strengthening us and all that so let's recognize the fact that we are to be in this great race equip ourselves by reading the word of God getting to know God getting to know God's rules for this race we can't run the way we like let us submit to the rules God has laid down for this race let us mix with other people who are also running this race so that we can encourage one another pray for one another and let us make sure that we each of us completes this race so that God can accomplish what he has purchased us for what he has paid a price for God can accomplish that in our life and through us reach out to many other people around us that is God's plan for us so may God help every single one of us to run this race to the goal that we completed shall we pray now for the for the benediction in the in the love of God our Father the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit we rest Lord in faith trusting in you Lord that you will lead us through this week all that is ahead of us you will take care of us you will bless us and you will make us a blessing a blessing to your name in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.